second with fight of the year, maybe. Um, so let's go with, let's start with fight of the year, Gio. Fight of the year. Let's go with fight of the year. Oh man. So yeah, another one that was difficult to decide. I feel like, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like we didn't really have like those big thrillers, you know, usually when you get these big fights, um, you get something close, something maybe even controversial. I feel like a lot of the fights this year uh, were decisive wins, the big profile fights. If you think about Crawford Spence, you think about Benavides versus Plant or versus Andre. You know, if you think about some of those heavyweight fights, you know, a lot of them were one sided. You know, Canelo's fights were one sided. So, you know, the Devin Haney against Lomachenko maybe could have been one of the candidates. But, you know, these here may be fights that were not as high profile fights as the ones that we mentioned. But very, very entertaining fights back and forth. Uh, I think my thought process going into these candidates was you know going into those went to when the point when the fight finished we were unsure of who was going to win you know if you look at netty against hovanisian you know netty got the stoppage late he was hurt several times in that fight right netty who's trying to He's, who's on a comeback trail, who's trying to get that Inoue fight. He needed to win this fight. This fight was at the beginning of the year. We still weren't sure what was going to happen um, as Inoue was going up in weight. But looking back, this was a very big moment for Neddy. 5% of the voters, Chris. I think that one was a bit overlooked. Yeah. Now, my personal pick which is not going to be my final vote for, but my personal pick, you see it there highlighted Navarrete versus Wilson. Navarrete hurt badly in this fight. He was dropped. He bought himself a few more seconds by spitting out his mouthpiece. Uh, he mentioned it on, on the podcast with El Terrible and Barrera, you know, veteran move that bought him some time. Uh, and he was saying that and I was hurt. I was dizzy. But, you know, that bought me a little bit of time. He was able to survive. He was able to come back, hurt Wilson, who who was bigger than him, uh, probably a bigger puncher than him as well, who also showed resistance, but he came back and stopped Wilson. Man, I remember watching this one vividly, and I was at the edge of my seat. I was nervous because I was hoping that Navarreta would win this fight. This was before that Valdez fight, so obviously they were trying to build that one up. Uh, once again, Chris, when the stakes are high and we, we, we get these very difficult opponents, you know, uh, nerve wracking scenarios there, you know, Wilder wasn't able to pass his test, uh, almost happened to Navarrete. He, he was almost stopped, but you know, he came back, survived and got a stoppage of his own 17% of the votes, uh, 45% Mungia against Deryanchenko. Back and forth fight. Both men looked hurt uh, a couple times throughout the fight. And Mungia saved his ass by dropping Devinchenko in that last round. Another very close fight. Back and forth. Um, 168 pounds this fight, I must add. So, you know, both men look strong. Uh, very back and forth exciting fight. 45% of the voters. So... We see it there. The third judge, you guys, the audience, you guys voted for that one. And, uh, of course, I think Ramirez Espinosa, too, maybe a little bit overlooked, too. Not as, you know, not as sexy name-wise as Mungia Devrichenko, but it still got 33% of the votes. Espinosa, once again, like the other guys, uh, was able to win that fight in that last round, dropping Robesi Ramirez and ultimately close decision but he got the nod and he got the belt so uh we see the vote there by the audience chris are going with mungia Devrichenko. uh i have a feeling this one might be a little tough to decide so you guys help us out in the chat help us out 
Did you did you give your pick, Gio, by chance, or are you gonna you're gonna wait a little bit? I had my personal vote, which was Navarrete Wilson. I think that's the one that I personally enjoyed the most. But I'm gonna I'm gonna save my final vote. I'm still I feel like I'm still going back and forth. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm gonna need some help from the audience. Uh, my vote is not gonna go with that one. Uh, that was just my personal preference fight uh runner up for me yeah for me when i think of like when i think of a fight of the year i normally don't think of high level high skills i just think of you know the rocky type of fights where there's not a lot, whole lot of defense you know just two guys going back and forth and you know they're willing themselves you know to try to beat the, the other guy and it's so competitive that it's it's just again it's very rocky-esque and when I think of a fight, I think of Munguia and Devrichenko. I think that's obviously all those names were great. All those fights were were amazing to watch. Um, the reasons that you you described, um, but in my opinion, Munguia and Derichenko is the one that kind of stands out the most. Yeah, people knew it was going to be a good fight, but I guess it was just known that Derichenko, even at 38, he still had a lot to offer. And Munguia, even though you know he's a younger, stronger, bigger guy, he hasn't lived up to to the hype, and so that's why it made that one very competitive. If I had to pick my fight of the year, though, Gio, it's it's one that's not here, and it's one that that involved more skill, more ring IQ, and it's one that we mentioned uh, throughout the year and and earlier in this podcast. For me personally, this year, usually again, I pick the the you know I I, I pick the less skilled fights, but for this year, my opinion, my favorite fight was Devin Haney Lomachenko because you just couldn't you couldn't look away, you couldn't. You know, you had to you had to be focused in every round to see if one guy was gonna you know take over or one guy was gonna succumb to the skill of the other, and it was so high level competitive in my opinion, Gio. That's why I enjoyed it much more than some of these fights. Uh, but yeah, if I had to pick fight of the year off this list, Gio, I would have to go with Munguia Devrichenko because at the end of the day, we want to see uh you know we want to see Rome type Rocky fights. And that's exactly what we got with Munguia Debrichenko. Sergeant saying Vaquero versus Wilson both getting dropped and ending with a KO. He also adds that Cordina against Vasquez was a war as well. But Chris, yeah, I think we have our personal picks. Like I stated, mine was Navarrete against Wilson. Uh, great fight. I remember watching it here with a couple friends. And I, I was on my feet, Chris. I, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't even sitting down. I was like... Dang, this is crazy. You know, Navarrete getting hurt and then coming back with a KO. But I'm going to agree. I'm going to go with um, Jaime Munguia against Devrichenko. And I think this one has an unfair advantage because, look, I think Loma and Haney was a great fight. But as you mentioned, it more of a chess match. Great defense, great offense on both ends. Uh, I think in the mainstream, that should be the fight of the year, but like you stated, Mungia and Devrichenko were just going at it yeah. throughout 12 rounds, and, and Devrichenko was going to win that fight, it looked like, until he was dropped and badly hurt by Mungia. I took that big body punch. He had to take a knee in order to survive. Man, that, that yeah, that was a video game type of fight. Uh, I feel like Robesi, Ramirez, and Rafael Espinosa also deserve a lot of credit for the reasons that we mentioned earlier. Espinosa almost getting knocked out. The way he fell, knee all twisted, got up, he fell back down. Referee gave him a chance. He counted, bell rang, he survived. He came back, hurt Robesi a couple times, got hurt himself a couple times after that, and then was able to knock Robesi down as well. Uh, kind of similar to what Munguia did. Yeah, it, this was a difficult one, but uh, I think the Munguia, the Ruchenko just had just a tiny bit more action throughout the 12 rounds. So I'm going to go with that pick as well, uh, making it really a sweep, right, Chris? Because the 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 voters also voted for that one. Uh, maybe it doesn't tell the whole story. This was a, a, a tough one to decide, but for the first time today, we have a 3 0 vote, and that that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Unanimous decision, finally, no robberies here, man. 